I'm sure you all have seen a juggler playing out in the streets in the square of a city like Napoli. So he, this is a ball, and I'm going to place the ball at the tip of a slender stick. And I'm trying a difficult task to achieve, just the dynamic balance of this, of this stick. Not bad. This, is, this task is called inverse spherical pendulum, because basically it's uh, an upside pendulum with a ball which can fall in all directions. What do we need? to perform these tasks. Ability, agility, feedback, sensors. Is a, robot, is a robot capable of carrying out this task? And I'm going to take you now to the robotics lab at University of Naples, Federico II. And uh, this is my student, which, who has placed the stick on the tip of uh, a robot manipulator and is trying to manually balance the stick with a ball. That's almost impossible, and of course, he hasn't succeeded, he has failed. What you see now is the robot in action, and the robot is quite smart, because it's capable of moving fast the arm in such a way as to exploit the feedback from the sensor and ultimately keep the stick in, in balance. This is quite remarkable. But this kind of task is actually in line with the definition of robotics. Robotics is commonly accepted in our scientific community as the intelligent connection of perception to action. So the robot watches the ball, thanks to a stereo camera system, and then elaborates the information in an intelligent way through the controller, and then it acts the motion fast so as to compensate for the instability and keep the stick and the ball in balance. Robotics. Robotics has been attracting a lot of students. Robotics is a relatively young discipline which has been developing in the, in the last 30 years. You may be surprised to discover that the textbook, the robotics textbook, which is mostly adopted in universities around the world, is a book which was written here in Napoli by professors of University of Napoli, Federico II. The book has been translated from English into Italian, Greek, and even, even Chinese. Robotics and Napoli. For me, there's, there's been a challenge for complexity and opportunities for creativity. You have seen in the example, robot is a very complex system, and as such, it requires creativity in the design and the control. In the same fashion, Napoli is a city which naturally trains to complexity and inspire the people living in this city to develop a spirit of uh, creativity. In my life, I have been inspired by a work and play life model. And I want to elaborate on these two terms, work and play. There's a typical stereotype affecting uh, Napoli, and this is uh, the common stereotype of, uh, of uh, play without work as if in Napoli no one would really need to work, and we could just enjoy our time and play. This is the Neapolitan word, paziare. <laughs> what is the opposite of paziare? Is uh, a fatica. And this is the other stereotype, is uh, work without playing, which is the need of working for survival without really having fun, which ultimately leads to frustration. During my life, I strived and I wanted to disclaim these two typical stereotypes. I wanted to go beyond these two stereotypes. And when it was the time to make some decision, I wanted to stay in Napoli and to, to carry out my professional life here in Napoli. For me, this was also, uh, I had many, many, many professional opportunities to leave my hometown and my country, both at the beginning and in the course of my academic career, but in the end, I stayed. And it was a, a humble way to express my true gratitude towards my hometown, as well as my alma mater, University of Naples, Federico II. Why is Napoli so special? What is different? What is the distinction of Napoli compared to other bustling cities around the world? cities which are melting pots of different cultures and customs. I think I've been observing this because I was born and I grew up here. I travel a lot, but basically I, I am rooted 
to, to Napoli. I think this comes from the fact that uh, in Napoli, in Napoli neighborhood, the underclass, the middle class, and the few upper class, they live door to door. So the people living in this town develop a natural attitude towards social relationship. This is the art, in my view, is the art of uh, Neapolitan uh, so social skills. And at the same time, they develop their personality very much through creativity. And this brings me to the unless, which is the common thread across these TED Talks this afternoon in Napoli. I always strive for excellence. I always look beyond all the challenges. And I want to overcome all the stereotypes which are affecting, affecting this town. So when, when, um, what are, what are the, the drawbacks which uh, sometimes prevent people to be successful in this town? Bureaucracy, which is probably worse than anywhere else in Italy. Lack of models and infrastructures to facilitate research. I'm speaking about robotics, of course. Uh, uh, shortage of international contacts and, visi and poor visibility abroad. And last but not least, I dare to say, scarce appeal of the city abroad due to, the, to its bad reputation after the many tales of crime and rubbish. I spent all my energies to go beyond all the difficulties and all the drawbacks and uh, to establish an international team of robotic researchers which could compete at the forefront of uh, robotics uh, worldwide. After, in the last eight years, we, got, uh, we raised 9 million euro funding from European project. And this was quite a remarkable result. And what I want to say to you this afternoon, that I was kind of proud to have achieved these results in Napoli, with Napoli, and for Napoli, like nowhere else in the world would have been the same. You might have noticed that I keep saying Napoli also to respect the official name of the TEDx, TEDx Napoli. But there is, uh, you will discover in a minute, that there is a second reason why I like using the Italian word other than Naples, as someone would uh, say in, in English. Because my passion is not only for the hometown, but uh, it's more importantly... <laughs> ...for my soccer team. I'm a fan of Napoli since I was uh, a child, and then you shouldn't be surprised that the humanoid mobile two-arm robot manipulator in our lab, <laughs> being a son of Napoli, of course, is a, is a, a big fan of Napoli like, uh, like his father. This... <laughs> the robot you have seen is called Rodiman. Rodiman is the outcome of a project which has been funded by the European Research Council. Unlike several Italians who decide to spend their advanced grant in foreign institutions, for all those drawbacks and difficulties that I was discussing earlier, I wanted to keep the project in Napoli. And this also gave me a wonderful opportunity to contain the typical drain of brains who grow up emotionally, intellectually, and professionally in this town and uh, end up fertilizing other regions of the world. At the same time, it was a wonderful opportunity to attract bright minds from abroad. Talents like postdocs and PhD students chose, joined our robotics lab, and they came to Napoli to live their work and play experience. And this has been quite uh, rewarding. And as you can see in the photo, we have built together an international research team which can compete with the top teams in our robotics uh, uh, community. And this has been quite, uh, quite uh, uh, rewarding. And I want to tell you one story that uh, was happening in this lab, in the robotics lab at the University of Napoli, Federico II. And uh, one night, I was with some of my students working on the research proposal actually for the Rodman project. And as usual, we were working overtime, overnight. We became hungry. And then we decided to order a pizza. 
We were eating the pizza, and again, it was Napoli to illuminate us with the brilliant artifact of uh, the main concept of our project, which is non-prehensile manipulation, manipulation of objects without touching, and manipulation of the formable objects undergoing change of density and shape as they move, like in the art, in the Napolitan art of preparing a pizza. So when the project was approved, we involved one of the known pizzaiolo chef into the project, and uh, my good friend Enzo Coccia is wearing a biokinetic sensor suite Thanks to accelerometers and gyroscopes, we are capturing his motion. We pass them to Rodiman, and Rodiman is trying to replicate them in the most dexterous way. Rodiman is a project which is meant as a tribute to Napoli, of which the pizza represents a symbol of gastronomy and culture. But it's also a big challenge to take Napolitan robotic research at the top level. Rodiman is uh, a provocation to reaching the ability of a pizzaiolo chef. I tell you, I will never, I will never be able to, Rodiman will never be able to prepare a pizza like, uh, li li like a chef, but also has been a great media expedient to attract attention towards robotics uh, in Napoli. But there is a, another common stereotype which is, is, is our goal, is our mission, to replace the job of a pizzaiolo. Never. I will never trust a pizza prepared by a robot. This is clear. <laughs> but, so what is, what is the challenge behind Rodiman? The challenge is to develop, to have a setup where to test and develop the most advanced techniques for dynamic manipulation. And this is the case of... Uh, the formable objects, I'm speaking about uh, tissues, skin, muscles, human organ, I, like, for instance, in robotic surgery. And uh, thanks to a fruitful cooperation between the School of Medicine and the School of Engineering at the University of Napoli, Federico II, we have recently established a center, an interdepartmental research center for advanced robotics in surgery. Surgical robotics is only one advanced application of robotics, as can be found in the Handbook of Robotics. I dare to say that the Handbook project has been uh, the most exciting and professionally rewarding experience of my life. I have three children sitting in the audience, and they know, they very well know, that uh, the Handbook is like uh, my fourth child. Together with, uh, my, with my co-editor, and distinguished scientists from Stanford University, Usama Khatib, we work hard six years for the first edition and another six years for the second edition. What was the inspiring paradigm which motivated us to work and play so hard during these 12 years to provide a service to the international community? And in this endeavor, I benefit from my Neapolitan roots in the ability to coordinate a large group of more than 200 renowned scientists and to make them work together, scientists coming from different countries, sometimes from opposed schools of thought, and with the ultimate goal to provide the most fair balance of topics and uh, authors. The book was submitted to compete for a prestigious award which is given annually by the American Association of Publishers. This is the so-called Prose Award. It was the winner in the category of engineering technology, but uh, the most surprising and sweetest discovery was that the handbook won the general award for physical sciences and mathematics. And this was not an award for the publisher, not an award for the editors, for ourselves, nor for the authors. It was a tribute to robotics. In my view, it was the consecration of robotics as a science beyond engineering and technology. And this is also a natural way to react to a typical stereotype. We spoke about stereotypes of Napoli, but there are equally stereotypes about robotics. And uh, typically, we think that in a few years, Robots, all, all our jobs would be replaced by robots because robots are usually regarded as job killers. 
This is not quite true. In my view, it's true for knowledge workers like operator, data analyst, translator, but there are a number of physical jobs which cannot replace by humans. So we are going towards a future where robots and humans will work together, and robots will become a pervasive and personal technology like uh, the, personal the personal computers and the smart devices which have become totally ubiquitous. So in a few years, we will have in our environment uh, populated by robots. Robots are with us, within us, and among us. And if we concentrate our attention on the big challenge of the research community, this is uh, the human-robot interaction. We can tackle this challenge at different levels. We can take it at the cognitive level, where the issues are perception, awareness, mental models. We can take it at the physical level, where the issues are safety, dependability, and dexterity. But there are some other subtle issues which should be considered, and these regard the ethical, legal, and societal implications of using, of using robots. And for this reason, the community at large has established a new area of investigation, and this is the so-called robo-ethics, which is focusing on the human-centered uh, aspects of designing, controlling, and using, and using robots. In the future, robots will become more and more intelligent and sentient machines. And in my opinion, this will provide a number of wonderful opportunities for today's students, the passionate ones about robotics. At the bottom line, Napoli, for me, has been an incredible school of life, rich of both professional and social opportunities. I try to exploit the resources available in the best possible way with the goal, in my case as an academic, to establish an international school of uh, robotics. I hope that my story, my model, will be followed up by others if others will work with the same kind of enthusiasm and dedication to advancing the image and reputation of this town and its people, the future will be quite bright. Kudos to robotics, kudos to Napoli, mille grazie. And I conclude with a, a typical um, way of saying that we developed a few years ago. It's just looking optimistic. I mean, the mathematicians know very well the meaning, but my philosophy, inspiring my students and my team, is always keep the gradient. Mille grazie.